Hey guys, just a few days before Christmas and I'm starting a new project. Uh, in this one I'm going to be attempting to make my own roof rack for the van. Uh, it's something I've been wanting to do for a while and the main reason is uh, because I want to mount a, another solar panel on the rear of the van. It's got like a curved section to it and this makes it uh, in my mind quite awkward to fit without drilling lots of holes and I don't want to do that so I want to make a roof rack for it to uh, sit in between. So I'm going to take you through all the stages of what I do here. It's my own idea. Uh, I've not seen anybody else do it like this before on YouTube and it's something I've been mulling around in my head for a long time and hopefully it works and so we'll see and uh, so here goes. Just one more thing before I get started. Later on in the video I'm going to let you know how much all the materials in this uh, little construction project have come to and everybody likes to know how much things have cost and so we'll go through that later. So on the Boxer Relay Ducatos you get these little T-shaped things here and this is where the roof racks uh, fastened to and so I need to make some brackets for these. There's four of these down each side so I'm going to need eight in total. And to make the brackets I've got this uh, piece of aluminium it's uh, three inch by two inch or 75 by 50 millimeters and this is one meter long and I'm hoping to be able to get all the bits and pieces for the brackets out of this one piece. So if my idea works, we'll be successful. If not, I might need to buy some more. So I'll make a start cutting this. So I've marked off 80 millimeters on here and uh, I've never cut metal with this saw before, but we'll see how it goes. Well, that's okay, just needs a little bit of a file up. Get these burrs off. So now I've got my bit of uh, angle iron. I want to cut a slot in it so that it fits around this little knob here. And uh, I'm just going to measure how thick the stud is at the bottom. And it's just over seven millimeters. So I need to cut a slot in my angle iron. It's seven millimeters wide and also I'll just measure how far it wants to go on I'd say that's about 20 millimeters so I've just marked the center of uh, the angle mark 20 millimeters this way but the hole is going to sit there on the edge of the 20 millimeter mark so I need to start a little bit further in so we'll make it there need to cut down either side to make a slot Right, so now let's see if it fits. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, on to the next bit. So now we've got that on there, I'm going to measure. 
from that side of that stud to the edge of the aluminium and that's what nearly nine millimeters so on a piece of aluminium I'm going to mark that nine millimeters on there so that's the mark we've just put on there and with the angle grinder I'm going to cut a slot in this I'm going to leave about 20 millimeters from either end and just cut a slot in here how much of this we need so just put the slot at that side just marking it and I'm going to cut it there so I've got a slotted section now and uh, I've just marked Put two marks here 25 millimeters in from either edge and I'm going to drill a hole in the center between the slot that we've cut and the edge just drill a hole in here that's going to be a six millimeter well 6.3 millimeter hole or a quarter inch Also made two more marks these are 10 millimeters in from the edge and in the center I'm going to drill two 6.3 millimeter holes here too So now I'm going to put the uh, angle bracket section on. I'm going to put this over the top. And I'm going to look down the slot and just get the edge of the inside of the slot closest to me up to the edge of this lug here. Hold it in position. Just mark it. So Putting that over there now, I can see the marks I've made in here and put the holes over there and then I'm going to drill, clamp that and drill right through. So now we've got those holes through and I've got these uh, six millimeter M6 stainless bolts and uh, I wanted ones with the most shallow head on them and these were the ones that they had in stock that they were the shallowest so I'm going to be using them and so it should all fit together Something like that. So 
so we'll get up on the roof and see if we can get it together right so the idea to get the bolts in there slide that across get the top section on So I've got four normal nuts and four of the nylock kind. If I try and put the nylock on first, they're just going to spin. So I'm hoping that uh, the normal bolts will clamp it in position first before I put the nylock ones on. And the idea is, I've not tried it yet, is that with this slot being in here, when I clamp these two down, it's going to pull this section down in front of the little tab and stop it going backwards and forwards and then the other two we're just going to clamp the whole bracket in position and it hopefully will be pretty solid so we will see So that's what it looks like now, I'll probably cut uh, the rest of those bolts off a little bit, tidy it up a touch, but you can see how this is clamped down, and the lip between uh, that part is actually sort of on the front of here, so it's really solid. So bending the roof of the van trying to pull that so yeah happy with that just got a seven, seven more of them to make now right we'll catch you later so it's difficult to see with all the snow but uh, I've got all the rest of the brackets on I got my stall set out and I uh, got into a rhythm, it didn't take too long. But there is a problem, and if you look down the line of these, you can see that the uh, motorhome Wi-Fi thing there is uh, in the way of what uh, of the rail that I'm going to be putting down this side. And so I've had to come up with an idea, and what I've got is uh, some 30 millimeters by 50 millimeters aluminium of Phoebe and I've cut some little pieces and I'm gonna to have to pack off the side rail of the uh, roof rack and I'm gonna do this all the way around to make it uh, symmetrical so I just cut off some lengths and drilled some holes in the center once I've done that clamp them on like this you can see that and then uh, just drill through to get the holes in the same place this is the full complement of parts that I've ordered from KJN and what I've got here is two long lengths of aluminium profile these are for obviously down the sides and I've got four smaller pieces that I've had cut at one and a half meters but I'll be cutting these down myself and I know exactly what size I need and this aluminium profile the one that I've gone for looks like this you can get it so that it's solid all the way across on one side or even two sides or even three sides but uh, I've opted, opted for the one that's uh, slotted on all sides uh, for two reasons firstly because it's cheaper and also you can put this black stuff 
in there and that just clips in. Just gonna do this one handed. Like so. So I'm gonna put one in the top and one in the side. Or one one in the underneath and one in the side should I say. And I like the black stripe look of that. And it also means if I want to attach anything in these slots in the future, I can just take this out or cut a bit of this out. So the other things we've got are these corners. And these are what are gonna sort of sit in there. these caps and these are what go over the angle brackets when you've got your bolts in just tidies it up makes it look nice loaded plenty of bolts and nuts and also these end caps so these slot just on the end of your profile and uh, tidy that up, we've got four of them and I've got some of these inserts just in case I need them so that's about it, so that should do it so these T-shaped bolts that you can buy they just slot in the grooves these are 8mm slots they're using 6mm bolts you just slot them in anywhere along its length turn them 90 degrees and they have little slots in the top that you can see there and that indicates that they, you will actually turn them 90 degrees you can't really get a screwdriver in there a flat screwdriver to turn them very well which would be handy so to get one of these in position put two of these in the first length put in now all looking good and it just misses the motorhome wi-fi receiver so yeah and that's what it looks like with some trim put in on the side and underneath and I think it looks really good I just wish I'd have put that in first because when, when you're working with hands that are that cold you can't feel your fingers it's uh, a bit of a problem getting it in so I should have put it in first but yeah, looking good next piece on the other side now this black strip is much easier to put in if you do it beforehand you can just run it along with your finger with your thumb like that and it's in and you can't see the joint even which is just just there it's really good stuff that so I've got this other length put down the side and I've also cut the end pieces on the chop saw and I've put them together using these little angle brackets and I don't know whether I've done it right, but uh, it's really difficult to get a spanner in there to tighten them up. But uh, I've used this uh, nut lock uh, solution on every nut on the construction and uh, 
I'm hoping that's going to stop things coming loose but uh, well, something I'll have to check to start with to make sure that everything's okay but once these corners brackets are on the little covers the little covers over the brackets looks really good This is a solar panel that I've got, it's a 175 watt panel from Renergy and uh, the, the one that's uh, already on the van is a 185 watt. Uh, rule of thumb is that you should match them up both voltage wise and wattage wise if you're having two panels or one or more panels but uh, I couldn't uh, get a 185 watt panel on uh, the van roof in the, same, in the position that I want, it's too long. So I've gone for this one, which fits, and it's a monocrystalline. And uh, although the panel comes with holes on the underside, as you can see there, I want to uh, mount it so that uh, the rails that support it are on the sides, not on the bottom. I don't want it sticking up. So these rails that I've cut from the aluminium profile, I'm going to put some holes in the sides here and uh, screw them on there. I drilled the holes in the side of the solar panel and put the T-bolts through. I put some of this uh, nut lock on, on the threads of the bolts before attaching the nuts and just tighten them up with uh, a socket spanner. And this is all the four nuts and bolts tightened up and in position. And that's what it looks like. Yesterday I got the new panel fitted. You can see how flush it is with the side rails. And I just screwed it to, in position and bolted it in position with four of those right angle uh, brackets and then wired it up so I've wired it in series so that means that the neutral that comes up from the solar charge controller goes into the neutral of the new panel the positive wire from the new panel goes into the negative wire of the old panel or the existing panel and then the positive just remains the same you don't need to touch that one just leave it in position it's really easy so now i've got a total of 360 watts of solar for the two panels that one being 185 and this one 175 Also, I managed to get a bag of sort of these rubber caps, uh, the 10 millimeter diameter, and they're off at of eBay. And they just push over the top of them and finish it off, and it covers the whole thing up, which is a bonus. Actually, long enough, they're about an inch long, and they push on really well. Lovely tight fit, so that saves me having to cut the heads off the bolts there. Right, so how much did uh, all the materials come to for this project? The aluminium angle, the 3B2, was from Amazon and that cost £21.99, I'll call it £22. All the nuts and bolts that I got from a local DIY shop, they were £10, so I'll call that £32 in total. And then all the aluminium profile from KJN, all the brackets, everything to do with that, that was uh, nearly £272. So we call it £304 in total. That's uh, not including a solar panel, of course. So if you think that a Fiamma roof rack costs about £600, this one was for about half the price. 
which I think uh, is great and uh, it's so versatile this aluminium profile and with the T-bolts you can attach anything to it at any time anywhere along its length so I can put lights and security cameras and all sorts of things up there so I hope this uh, video has been useful for you and hopefully it'll save you some money if you do it in the same way okay take care see you next time bye bye